great. 50,000 people in my email list. But I want to send a marketing email to our US customers. How do I even find them? How do I even start? That's where HubSpot lists come to the rescue. Instead of blasting the same email to everyone in your list, you can group people based on what actually matters, like whether they're customers or not, their location, behavior, or even what pages they visited on your website. So your email lands with the right crowd. Hi, I'm Talita. I am a marketing automation consultant and HubSpot expert. Today, we're going to talk about HubSpot lists. Okay, so first things first, where are lists inside HubSpot? CRM and then segments, lists, just so that you know. HubSpot recently renamed lists to segments. So if you're seeing this name in your portal now, don't panic. They're the same thing, just with a new name. Okay, so what is a list slash segment inside HubSpot? It's basically a smart group of records, right? You can create lists based on contacts, companies, deals, or tickets that share something in common. Instead of trading all of your contacts, contacts in the CRM, all the people that you have in your contacts list, the exact same way, you can organize them into smaller, more meaningful groups. This is an example of a list here, founders, right? In this list, I'm putting all the founders that I have in my CRM. For this specific list, I only have one founder. That's absolutely fine, okay? It's simply a way of organizing my contacts, okay? So why do we use lists? We use lists to send marketing emails only to the right people, to build ad audiences, to power workflows, right? So automations only apply to certain contacts or just to keep your CRM a little bit more manageable. So now that we know why, let's do the how. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. So how do you create a new list inside segment list inside HubSpot? I'm sorry if I still say the word lists, it's just because I'm so used to it. You're gonna click on segments and then you're gonna click on create segment, the orange button. This opens up your list builder. Think of it as your workshop. This is where you're gonna decide exactly who belongs in your new list, okay? The first step here is to choose your object. So create a segment of contacts, deals, orders, companies, tickets, lookalikes, right? What is this? If you're new to HubSpot, object might sound a little bit technical, but I will add a tutorial here in the video description where you can learn more about HubSpot basic technology, including, you know, what are objects and how do we use them? Just so that you know, an object is the type of data you're working with, right? So contacts are individual people that you have in your CRM. They're the customers or leads in your email list. Companies are the organizations those contacts belong to. Deals are opportunities that you have in your sales pipeline. Tickets are support requests from your customers. Typically for marketing emails, like if you're creating a list because you want to send people a marketing email, you're going to be working usually with contacts as an object. So you're going to create contacts based list. Okay, so let's suppose that I'm gonna do this. I'm going to, you know, go ahead and, and use this list in a marketing email. I'm gonna go ahead with the option contacts here. So I have to select this before creating my list. Okay, perfect. Here, there is some information about segments. I can also use AI to create my list as well, but just because I want to give you the full process here. I want you to be familiar with the entire process. We're going to learn how to do this manually. And then of course, you can always come back here and add a prompt to build lists faster later on. Okay, let's go ahead and let's click on next. Cool. So I'm inside my list. What do we have to do now? Here is where the magic happens. Filters. Filters are basically the rules that you set to decide who gets in and who gets left out of your list segment, right? Let's say we only want to reach founders with our marketing email. So basically what we're doing is we're gonna add a filter that captures all the founders that we have in our CRM. Now, how do I know who is a founder and who's not a founder in my CRM? Well, typically in an ideal world, we're using HubSpot properties to help us identify who is who inside HubSpot, right? And so the idea is that you're always updating a property to indicate what are your customer's job titles, right? This is, I'm using a fictional example here, you know, think about a B2B scenario, right? And you're updating a HubSpot property called job title. In this case here, what I have to do is actually add a filter based on the property job title, right? So when I click to add a filter here, I see all these different options here. I can create lists based on properties, as I mentioned just now. I can create lists based on interactions with my ads, interactions with my calls to action, interactions with my documents, a list of all the people that filled out a specific form or engaged in a specific marketing campaign. You know, we have so many options to work with. Just for this example, just so that we can get started somewhere here, let me go ahead and let me add a contact property as a filter for my list. So, job title. 
Now, there are many options to work with here, okay? When I select a property to use as a filter for a list, I can go for the options is equal to any of, is not equal to any of, contains any of, doesn't contain any of, you know, so many different options to work with here. Just so that we don't spend too much time talking about all these different options that we have here, take a look at a link in the description of this video. I added a resource for you so that you can read a little bit about these options here and understand what they mean. Just so that you know, if I'm looking for founders, right? Job title is founder. Basically, I'm going to use the option is equal to any of. Means is equal to, right? And I'm going to add the option founder here. Okay? The other options are, you know, is not equal to any of. That could be something that I'm creating a list on all the job titles except founder, right? Is not equal to founder. In that case, I would exclude founders from my list. Contains of, any of, you know, the word, for example, manager could be in there, right? So I could build a list of all my marketing managers, sales managers, right? Contains any of the word manager. These are just examples that I'm giving you here, but I don't want to spend too much time here because this is a whole world in itself. So please take a look at the link in the description of this video so you can read more about these options here. For now, is equal to any of founder means we're going to capture all the founders that we have in our CRM, okay? And when you click to add a filter, HubSpot is going to automatically select people that meet that criteria that you selected. But Talita, how can I double check this? Is in this case, is Maria really a founder? I don't know about that. Well, you can actually go to their contact profile and double check and make sure HubSpot is doing a good job here. How do I know this? Well, I have to actually look at the property job title, right? Let me just do this together with you. Job title. Job title is filled out with the word founder. So, Maria is a founder. That's why Maria is in my list. Okay, so you can always check the contacts that you have here. You can always check them and make sure that HubSpot is selecting the right people. But don't worry, HubSpot will be selecting the right people. Okay, <laughs> just so that you know. And that's pretty much it, right? So once you're done with your segment slash list, you can rename it just as I did with my other list. I'm gonna just give it a name and I'm going to click to review and save. Now, there are a few questions that I have to answer here. HubSpot is asking, do you want to save this list segment as an active list or as a, as a static list? Mm, let's talk a little bit about that. Active lists update automatically, okay? So if someone meets your rules, let's say tomorrow, they will be added to the list. If they stop meeting, the rules, right? Matching that criteria, they will simply drop out automatically. You set the rules once and HubSpot keeps it up to date for you. In this case here, let me just close this and show you something. In this case here, we have job title is founder, right? Right now, at this point of time, in the history of time, I have one founder in my CRM, one person. Cool. If I save this as an active list and tomorrow, a new founder gets added to my HubSpot CRM, my list will be automatically updated, right? And so an, an active list is a list that changes automatically. HubSpot changes it for you, okay? All you have to do is set out your rules and HubSpot automatically changes your list. Now, a static list is more like a snapshot. You take a picture of everyone who matches your criteria right now and that's it. The group won't change unless you manually update it. You typically use static lists for one-off campaigns, like for example, sending an event invite to everyone who signed up last week or something like this, right? Um, a static list is a list that doesn't change. HubSpot is not going to automatically update your list. In this case here, if I save my list of founders as a static list, I'll have one founder forever, basically. Does that make sense? Cool. Once you're done choosing what kind of list you're going for, you're gonna click to save it. And that's pretty much it. This is your very first HubSpot segment slash list. And now let's talk a little bit about different types of options that we have when creating lists. I want either coffee or wine. Mm, no, I want a coffee and a wine. <laughs> Okay, so here is where things get fun. You don't have to stop at just one filter per list. You can mix and match filters by using and or, for example, let me reuse the exact same example from the list that we built just now, right? Job title is equal to any of founder. What if I want to select only founders that are based in a specific country? For example, the United States, right? In this case, I have two types of criteria for my list. Job title is founder, country is United States. So in this case, what I can actually do is go for the option and and add a second filter based on this time country. United States. Let's see my list changing here. I don't have anyone. 
right? I don't have anyone in my list that matches this criteria. Probably because Maria, which was the only founder that I had, is not based in the United States. Let me do something else here. Let me change from founder to something else. I know that I have more marketing managers in my CRM. Let's see if my list changes. Sometimes lists, they take a while to update, but here you go. I have Jennifer Lopez, Emma Watson, and Keanu Reeves. Amazing, they're all marketing managers based in the United States. Talita, I wanna double check. Is Keanu Reeves really a marketing manager based in the United States? Let's check. Let me go to Keanu's profile and I can see inside his properties list that country is equal to United States and job title is marketing manager. Whoa, amazing, right? Keanu Reeves does a little bit of everything, indeed. But this is essentially how you use the option and. When you go for the option and, you are narrowing down your search. You're adding two or more types of criteria at the same time. And someone only gets added to your list if they meet both criteria at the same time, okay? If Keanu Reeves was not based in the United States, he wouldn't be in my list. But Talita, what about the option or? If you're using the option or, someone must meet either one criteria or the other. Let me give you another example here. Someone is either based in the United States or in, let's say, Argentina, for example. So in this case here, someone joins my segment, whether they're based in country, United States or country, Argentina, okay? And once again, I can obviously click on their profiles and go and double check that this is the case, right? So, and you're narrowing down your search, okay? In my example, if I go for the option and, I'll have wine and coffee at the same time, right? If I'm using or, I'll either have a glass of wine or a cup of coffee. Uh, honestly, I'm happy with whichever I get. <sighs> What a mix. When it comes to HubSpot, things can be really, really funny. Here's a big mistake I see people making sometimes. People think lists or you know segments are only about profile info, like job title, location, industry. But HubSpot can actually build segments of so much more. Basically, any digital footprint a contact leaves, email, engagement, for example, right? Engagement with marketing email. Let's say I'm looking at this email specifically here. I can create a list based on whether someone has opened that email, clicked a link in that email, opened but didn't click, opened but didn't reply, <laughs> or replied, or unsubscribed. I oh got, you know, options are many here, as you can see, right? And so you can build a list based on marketing email activity. What else do you have here? Form submissions, here's another example. If I click to add a filter based on form submissions, I can go for this form here, for example, and I can choose whether someone would be added to my list based on they have filled out the form or they have not filled out the form, right? I also have website activity, such as page views, for example. Someone has visited my pricing page three times last week, which is, by the way, a big buying sign, right? So HubSpot lists or segments are really, really powerful. You're not just grouping people by who they are, right, according to their properties. You can also group them based on what they do. This is a big aspect in marketing because you definitely want to nurture contacts based on their behaviors, right? If they are looking at your pricing page multiple times, hey, you know, that's something for us to think about out there. Uh, perhaps we can engage with them and we can ask if they need any help, if they have any questions about our products or services. This is really just an example. There's much more that you can explore here, okay? In the description of this video below, I am actually adding a few resources that you can take a look at when it comes to building lists based on other things, things other than just contact properties, right? And by the way, you know, let's remember that we can always create a list based on things other than contacts. We're talking about contacts so far because is, you know, this is typically the, the most popular choice for marketers working with HubSpot segments, but you can also build a list based on companies. In that case, the options that you have will differ a little bit, okay? You, if you, if you want to build a list based on company information, you're going to be choosing company properties, not contact properties in that case. And that's your crash course in HubSpot lists from simple you know, job title filters to advanced behavior-based segments. Lists are your marketing Swiss army knife inside HubSpot. If this was helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more HubSpot tips, and drop a comment with the list you use the most. I would love to see how creative you all get. Until next time, may your open rates be high and your unsubscribe rates be low.